Well, this is after this mini camp leading up to training camp. Will it be a little bit different from you since you're coming back off a major injury? What can you walk us through what you'll be doing that maybe you normally don't as you get? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I'll be taking. Um, I mean, obviously, I'll get away and take a breather, but for the most part, I'll continue my rehab. I'll continue uh, doing all the necessary things that um, I feel the training and the staff feels that, that I need to do just to get myself, uh, as I say, better than I was before I broke my ankle. So whether that's uh, training here, training with our guys, or um, heading out to California and getting some more specific positional work, uh, I'll do all the things necessary to, as I said, be, be the best I can be heading into camp. Could all of this OTA and mini camps have been, been any better for you? And what you were able to do out here in these six, seven, eight weeks? One more time in the beginning. Could have all these OTAs and minicamp, what you've been able to do, could it have gone any better for you? Oh, no, it's been great. Uh, it's great. I mean, it's just exciting, as I told you guys before, just to, to be back out there, man, just to be back out there with my teammates, breaking a huddle, uh, throwing the ball. Uh, obviously, I didn't have a pass rush going, and, and at times, you know, you feel almost a little anxious sitting there holding the ball. But other than that, um, it was great. As, as much as I could ask for, obviously, coming off an injury like this and being safe and still taking the precautions that we need, but at the same time, uh, just letting me go free and doing what I can. And um, it's been great. It's been fun. It's been good OTAs. I know we've, we've taken a big step and we're ahead of a lot of the guys that, that didn't do the OTAs or that didn't take this part of the offseason the way that um, we did. Um, so I know we'll just have a we'll be taking a big leap as we head into training camp and excited for it. What did you learn about yourself or did you surprise yourself with the things you were able to do? No, I mean. Uh, I'm a guy that just controls what I can control. Uh, and I knew that I controlled each and every day, the attitude, the effort, and everything that I put forward, whether it was rehab, whether it was an OTA, um, or whatever it may be. Um, and then when I do that, uh, usually good things come from it. So wasn't surprised at all. Uh, l learned that um, just another, another little adversity came, and I was able to wipe it off and just excited to, to get back out there and be full go and get into some of these practices and have a, have a rush coming and being able to move, maneuver between that and make throws. And... Uh, I'm just I'm just excited to be back and ready for it to be 11 on 11 and uh, not uh, not missing the four on defense for D lineman. What was that adversity that came? Well, I'm just saying the injury. I mean, just uh, from from break, from snapping the ankle to uh, a couple of months later having another surgery uh, and then moving past that and just. Um, as I said, I have, a, as I said before, I've got an amazing support system with my family, uh, friends, obviously organization with the Cowboys and teammates that were behind me 100%. And I think that makes it a lot easier when you're, when you're battling or overcoming something like I did is that uh, I hold myself to high expectations and high standards, but I know it's a lot of other people that um, just hold me accountable to my own words. And so that, that's just great when you have that. And it's just allowed me to keep pushing and be better. And as I said, that my plans when I head into camp are to be better than I was before I broke my ankle. Where your body is, is that the biggest thing you got out of these last five to six weeks? Yeah, for sure. And just knowing that, uh, that, that I could do all the different drops. Oh, are they still in there? Yeah. Oh, just knowing that I can do uh, all the different drops, get away from pressure when I need to. I'm sure you guys seen the scramble drill that we've done a few times. So uh, that, that was a big one for my confidence, is being able to pivot and turn out left. Uh, get out of their right, change directions, uh, not feel anything, and then look at the tape and realize day by day that I'm running more smoother, I'm getting better, I'm using my leg more as I throw. Uh, and those are just all building blocks and stepping stones for me to get to where I want to be, and um, it's just exciting. Do you feel like over the course of this practice, I mean, I know it's just one practice over a greater screen, but do you feel like you're able to get into a real rhythm today? It seemed like, you know, we've been out here watching a few of your, 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 your practices, but it definitely seemed like midway to practice on – you, you you were you kind of were were hot, I guess. Did you did you feel that in your side? I mean, I think it just comes with reps. I mean, I think the other practices you, you guys were at, and even um, before today, I think today was the most reps I've probably gotten. So uh, I think that helps in the fact of um, just getting those reps underneath me, being able to uh, throw some passes and, and getting that groove and, and kind of get hot, as, as I say before, or, or feeling myself in that sense. And um, today with more reps allowed me to have more throws. And then down there in the red zone, when you get a couple in the end zone, uh, yeah, you start feeling it. So uh, it was great. It was a great way to, to, to uh, finish the day and just to know that, um, I'm getting better. Jack, you mentioned some of the people who supported you in your recovery time. Smith told us yesterday that when he watched you rehab, it lit a fire in him to keep working harder, seeing what you did. What does it mean to hear him say that? And can you tell us a moment or two that stands out rehabbing beside your offensive lineman? 
Um, yeah, I mean, that, that means a lot. Uh, th there's, nothing more, there's nothing more special than a compliment from your peers, somebody that sees you work day in and day out, uh, the good and the bad. And um, that's what those linemen are. As much as he said, I got him going each and every day that I walked out there and watching the way that they approach uh, workouts and the way they approach rehab, whether it was Tyron, whether it was LC, whether it was Mitch Hyatt, um, whether it was Tristan, uh, there was a big group of us, Blake Jarwin. Um, so that just, uh, each and every day, I mean, we all, we all built off of each other and we all uh, used each other for energy. I mean, we come in and two of the guys get off the field before me and LC take the field and we asked them how it went and how did they feel today and just, you know, just to hear how much better they got day by day makes you excited to go attack the field. And then as we get off to be able to pass those same words to uh, whether it be Zach and Tyron, um, it's just building that confidence, that camaraderie in each other. Uh, and just commitment. I mean, true commitment from grinding uh, from the rehab and the injuries, but not only that, just to doing the, the rest of the stuff that the team's doing to make sure that we're all better than we were before we got injured. When you're, when you're providing a timeline, like how long you uh, were in a cast and a booth, and then when you first started running? Timeline, honestly, I really can't. Uh, yeah, I just know the first... The first surgery, I guess um, I got out of my boot probably like a week, and then I was having another surgery. Uh, and then after that, I really like said hell with the time, to be honest with you, uh, and didn't didn't keep account of day by day or week by week and just started going more off of how my body felt and um, just the things that I was able to do from one day to another. Um, and I think that's what got me through it, honestly, is I wasn't counting months. Uh, I think it was just the other day that I actually had to, you know, count on my fingers the, the, the time the, since I've been hurt. So uh, I haven't really kept up with that. And that was one of my goals and missions when I first got hurt is I said, I'm not going to try to beat anybody's timeline. I'm going to uh, j just go out here and work day by day uh, and just try to get myself better because I knew the amount of time I had before I actually need to be ready for the season. When you're rehabbing, is your focus solely on your injury and improving and taking those strides, or are you conscientious of your energy and trying to lead, you know, those guys who are rehabbing there beside you? I mean, in a situation like that, I'm going to lead by example. Um, obviously, when me and LC, uh, more so than me and anybody else, worked, worked uh, as a tandem in the rehab session. So, I mean, you know, there's the times when that got tough on him and it got tough on me that – we spoke words to each other just to keep each other going, but um, I think the rehab in that time is important for you to lock in on yourself and work on your confidence, work on your energy, and work on um, getting through getting through whatever that injury injury is because there's a lot of mental barriers that you've got to break through, and if you're not um, cognitive of, of trying to push through those injuries and push through that little bit of pain knowing that it's better, um, that then I might be cheating myself and I might not be taking that step that I needed. So for me, it was, it was really about just uh, – showing those guys how I work and um, just doing that by concentrating on getting this injury better. And I feel like if they want, if they needed to see a leader, if they needed something from me, they could have got it from just the way that I approached the days. You know, what did you learn about yourself during this process from recovering from the injury? Yeah, I mean, not to say I'm some egotistical guy, but I've never really set limits on myself, and I've always had, I believe, higher expectations than anybody else has for me, and I hold myself to high standards. But um, to actually just see myself six, seven months later from from the injury or whatever it is, and uh, yeah, I mean, just knowing that the, there is no limits. There is no limits to what the mind can do. There's no limits to what you can push yourself to do. Um, there, there's a lot of injuries that uh, that have more of a mental weight than they actually do a physical weight. And if you can learn how to get that off of you just by trusting yourself, believing in what you can do, trusting the doctors and the people around you, uh, you, you can do pretty much anything you want coming back from majority of the injuries that this game gives us. You now that you've been with uh, Katie Lamb for a whole year. How do you think that your guys' relationship has grown and just what are your expectations for you guys this, this second season? Oh, my ex expectations are super high. Um, so excited for C for CD. So excited for just his growth from what our five games together to just getting back out there in OTAs and throwing it to him and watching him get off the line, run routes, go up and get contested balls time and time again. Um, it's exciting. It's exciting what he's going to offer and what's exciting he just brings to this whole receiving core and this offense. Uh, he's a special playmaker that that we're privileged to have, and uh, he'll he'll be big time and definitely have a breakout season. Uh, huge. They're, they're the most important, if you ask me. I mean, from the time that I got drafted here until now, that is uh, 
this offense was built off of those guys. Those are, those are the three most veteran guys on this team, and that's for a reason. Uh, those guys are walking uh, walk pro bowl guys when they're healthy, you know what I mean? Uh, future Hall of Famers, and just to have those – those three guys lead the, lead the five guys up front. Uh, everything starts with them. The run game, then that allows the pass game to open up. So when you have when you have those guys back, healthy, energized, uh, it's special, and that just allows us to feed off of them and all of our athletes. Just go out there and make plays, and makes our job easier. Dag, what have you seen from uh, Zeke Elliott during this offseason? Oh, uh, Zeke is Zeke looks great. I mean, Zeke's in the best shape of his life, looking fast. Uh, obviously, everybody's seen his, his, the clips of him working out um, independently with his running back coach and uh, his cuts, just how explosive he is. Um, excited just to, to have a full full year with him again and uh, getting him uh, healthy throughout the whole season. Um, once again, with Zeke's healthy and Zeke's doing his thing, he's he's the best running back in the league. So it's just exciting to to um, see him in the best shape of his life or best shape of he's been in the NFL and know that it's going to be special for us moving forward. Different from a coaching staff standpoint than the defense. How has it all have your meetings with Kellen been different over the last few weeks than they were in previous seasons? How our meetings been different? Yeah, or where are some ways that y'all are continuing to grow and develop the offense as you build that relationship with Kellen? Yeah, I mean, we're uh, obviously you want to install the basics, and uh, we're, we're putting in some few new plays and things that we can we think can help us out in different parts of the field, but. Um, yeah, it's, it's about taking another step uh, from these plays to the communication aspect, whether it be from the me and the offensive line being on the same page or all the receivers knowing they're hot or moving guys around. I mean, we were able to put Tony Pollard at receiver, right, and then put him back in the backfield, and that's what uh, the OTAs and that's what having this um, – the return of guys, the return of coaching staffs allows you to do is to, to really just finagle your offense and play with it for the, the ways that you want to to, to help you out. And uh, we're, benef we're benefiting from that, of just being here in OTAs and having this time and having this time together being committed. You mentioned the scramble drill stuff that you guys are doing. It seems like you've done more of that this spring than you did in any other spring. Why is that? Or was it any kind of, all right, let's test this. Did you want to want to do more to test your ankle to see how things work. Yeah, it had nothing to do with my ankle rather than just uh, how big and um, how important those scramble plays are in, to, in the game today. Uh, when you get when you get them, there's not a lot of them for the most part, but they're big plays when you get them and they're successful. And uh, you just don't want to get into a game uh, and you have three scramble plays and that'd be the first time you scrambled all season. So uh, it's important just to get it in the off season to learn the receivers, to, to learn the back end when I move, how the defense moves. and. Um, as coach says, coach tells us it's like fast break, right? So just as in basketball, they practice their fast break offense. So we need to practice our fast break uh, offense as well, whether that's scrambling in the red zone, whether that's scrambling in the field, and just to create the space and to give me throwing lanes outside of the uh, initial routes that are called. And I think it's been beneficial. So I know to me and I know to the receivers and each and every one of us as we talk through all the uh, different reps that we've been able to get. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, when you go, as I said, when you go back and look on field, and from the first day to the last day of me scrambling, you know what I mean. You can t visually tell that I'm running better. Uh, that's the good part of it. But in rehab before this, I was doing all kind of cuts, jumps, and things like that that w that happened in a scramble drill. So never within the drill did I ever think about my leg or did I ever think that this was a part of a rehab rather than I'm pushing myself and I've blocked that mentally. Uh, I've buried the injury, honestly, guys. You know what I mean? From the point of practice, from the point of just moving forward and going about my life, uh, I've buried it. Uh, I've buried it mentally, and I think – you guys and a lot of people around uh, have to help me and bear it as well as, as we move forward. Well, that last one on that where you completely bury it. <laughs> Put it right on the tombstone. <laughs> Did you have any ankle soreness or, or leg fatigue at the start of OTA periodically that you don't have now? Have you noticed any change in, in that respect? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think the first couple of days were also on the turf, so maybe that played a part in it. Uh, I was doing more more true just drops in football movements than I had been in the rehab part of it, right? So, uh, yeah, from the first week of even teaching sessions to now, um, yeah, I mean, I, I left practice yesterday. We'll leave today. Uh, hopefully no soreness, uh, no residual swelling or anything like that. And, uh, and honestly, I say that because that's what a, that – with all that gone and none, none of those effects, that's what allows me and helps me bury it, to be honest with you guys, is I don't even think about it uh, before practice, pre-practice, uh, but still doing all the necessary things and being smart that um, I am still only seven months away or so from the injury.
when did you bury it? What's the time of death? Like when, when was it officially over? Yeah, I'd honestly say about a month ago, uh, somewhere around Cinco de Mayo. Uh, and I really just, yeah, I mean, just, uh, yeah, I had a good Cinco de Mayo, had, was a little active, and at that time maybe did some little dance moves, and I felt like I'm ready to go. So uh, that was the time that I said in my head, uh, the injury's gone, so. No, 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 no dancing on it. <laughs> that was guys. Thank you. Appreciate you guys.